So I've finally done it. I have finally figured out how to stop the oil from coming out of the turbos in my rear mount kit. As you can see, I've been driving it around for uh, two weeks now, three weeks now, and no oil in the exhaust. There's, what I've noticed is that if you let the turbos sit for a little while on a humid day, they get a little bit of rust inside the exhaust, so that's what that brown stuff is. It's just rust um, and, and air from whenever you, or rust and water from whenever you first started up. But here's the, here's the trick. The Spartan oil pump that I bought, while it's a lot quieter, doesn't have enough flow to outpump both of these turbos. Um, so the problem was at idle and cruise, I would not get any spray in the turbos. But if I get on it and go up to, you know, 5,000, 6,000 RPM. Help me, doctor, please! It sprays oil out of the turbos. It gets it in the exhaust or in the uh, compressor housing. It gets it everywhere. One of the things I did was I switched from the Spartan pump back to the pump that came with the kit, the cheap $60 Marine fuel pump. And if you'll notice, there's this heat sink on it. Uh, but this is the same exact setup that I had with the Spartan oil pump. Um, the uh, cheap oil pump that came with the kit actually fits inside that a heat sink very nicely um, and so I just literally took the Spartan pump out put that pump in I'm a little bit more happy with this pump because it's got a steel housing for these fittings to go inside um, and I put that pump in there I'm like, well, you know, I've got this pump. The, the written on the pump, it says it flows 3.7 gallons per minute. The Spartan pump, even in open flow, is only supposed to flow uh, 1.5 gallons per minute. So it's more than double the flow at, op you know, with, at zero PSI, at open flow. And so whenever I put that on there, I drove it around the block. Even when it was cold and the oil pressure gets really high, no spray in the turbos, none whatsoever. It's like, yes, finally. Um, but one key is these fittings right here have to be, you have to have this washer, and you have to have a compression washer, you have to use Viton seals for both of them, and it has to remain airtight. If those seals go bad or you don't have that airtight, it just sucks air in through those fittings and you don't get any, you don't get nearly as much flow. So that took care of the spray, but then what was happening was after I let it sit overnight, I'd get a little oil drip right here, and I'd get a little oil drip right here. And so what was going on was the supply line right here still has a whole bunch of pressure in it from the motor after you turn the motor off. And even though I have a 30 second timer that keeps the oil pump running after the car gets shut off, it wasn't enough. There was still enough pressure in the motor and enough pressure in the line that it filled the turbos up again and the oil would seep in. And I know this because what I did was I took the compressor housing off right here and you can see right here, there's the uh, exhaust wheel, or I'm sorry, the compressor wheel right here. So I took, took the compressor housing off and just let it sit. And sure enough, you could see a little drip of oil drain down the compressor housing from behind the, um, from behind the shaft that powers the compressor wheel. So I said, okay. And you know what's terrible is the guy that made the kit, um, Phobia Street, the guy that actually made the kit, whenever I started communicating with him two years ago, he actually told me how to fix that problem, and it just didn't even register in my brain. And what you have to do is you have to get a check valve. And that's what this is. And you'll notice there's an arrow right there. The flow only goes in that direction. Flow um, cannot go this way. And I've got one on each side. I've got one over here too. And you notice I've got the arrow going toward the turbo. So basically what happens is, um, oil will flow to the turbo 
And then when you turn the motor off, my pump runs for another 20 seconds, 30 seconds, something like that, and then the pump shuts off. Well, then there's still a little bit of oil that's flowing through those lines seeping into the turbos. Well, those check valves close. When there's no flow, it takes one PSI of flow to open the check valve. So unless there's at least one PSI, the check valve closes and it doesn't open. So what it does is it blocks that flow from the motor, all of that uphill flow of oil from going down into the turbos. The other thing it does is it keeps the motor from running dry of the um, uh, lifters and the oil pump and all that kind of stuff because basically what happens is over time the lifters have spring pressure and that spring pressure, it I guess it lets the oil out of those lifters or something because if I let it sit for like two or three weeks like I just had to do because I was traveling all over the world, whenever I would get back um, and start it up, it would go clack, 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 clack for a second, you know, because you could hear the lifters tapping until they got full of oil for like five seconds when you first started it up after it would be sitting for a long time. Well, now that I've got those check valves in there, I put the check valves in there right before I went on this trip and it sat for almost three weeks. I came back and started it up. No oil in the compressor housings, no oil in the turbine housings, and the motor didn't, you know, make that terrible noise whenever it first started up. Um, so, and they call it cold starting, so it's not like it's the end of the world. Every, every motor does it, every motor has a problem with it. So that completely solved the oil problem. So these check valves are um, McMaster car part numbers. I will put the um, part numbers that I bought in the description. And unfortunately they're NPD, NPT, so national pipe thread, female on both sides. So you have to buy an adapter to screw into it. So it ended up costing me 46 bucks to get four adapters um, and the check valves and then another adapter to go to the turbo. So for $50 and using the oil pump that came with the kit, I fixed the problem. Now, the oil pump is obnoxiously loud at idle. I will give you that. But since I have it mounted to this heat sink and the heat sink is in these rubber brackets and then... The bracket is mounted with double-sided silicone to the subframe. It's really not that bad once you start driving. So the problem is the pump pumps so much. At idle, there's not a lot of oil flowing through the turbos. So it's out pumping the turbos. So basically you've just got two brass gears in there whining against each other. As soon as you start driving and you drive down the road at 30 miles an hour, 40 miles an hour, and the oil pressure goes up to 42 or 45 PSI, the pump almost goes silent and to the point where you go down the interstate and you can't hear the pump at all. If I'm driving down the boulevard at 50 miles an hour or 40 miles an hour, you really can't hear the pump. So what I've discovered about this gear pump is that once it fills with oil, it gets quieter. What I discovered about the Spartan pump, because it's a diaphragm pump, it's completely silent until it fills with oil. Once it fills with oil, the diaphragm pump starts to vibrate and that's when it makes noise. So the harder the pump would be working, the Spartan diaphragm pump, the harder that pump works, the more noise it makes. The harder this pump works, the more fluid you put through it, the less noise it makes. So it's ideal for cruising, but if you're in stop and go traffic, it, it will drive you nuts. Um, and the only way that you can really solve that is with helical cut gears. If anybody knows how I can get a set of helical cut gears to drop into this thing, I am all ears. I'll pay a hundred bucks for them or, or, or I don't know, we'll see. But you can get the Spartan pump that's a lot like this one with helical cut gears and it's a lot quieter. But I just can't justify spending $400 to get rid of a little bit of an annoying noise. So for right now I'm dealing with it. But one thing that really helped the noise is mounting it with this heat sink to this bracket and then isolating it here. Because what I had it done before in the videos where you could hear the oil pump up the street, basically what I had was this oil pump bolted directly to this frame. So it was like an acoustic wonder for that pump to just annoy you to death. So that completely, completely, completely solved the oiling problem. No oil whatsoever in the turbos. It doesn't smoke under deceleration or acceleration. It doesn't pool in the turbine housings, nothing. So with the combination of a really high flowing pump and check valves, 
no oil whatsoever. So if you're gonna do a rear mount kit, what you have to do is get check valves on the turbo supply. And I would recommend at least one PSI. There's like 0.3 PSI, but I just don't think that's enough because what I can do on these one PSI, I can put it up to my mouth and, and it opens. So with pressure from my lungs, I can open it. So I know when I put 50 PSI from the motor on it, it's opening. But I do know that there's a lot of pressure, oil pressure still in the motor whenever you turn the motor off. So you want enough where it's gonna keep it closed, but not so much, you don't want like five or 10 PSI because then the, mo the turbos are not gonna see oil until it gets to 10 PSI at that line. And that could take 10 seconds after you start the motor up. So I, I would recommend like a one PSI check valve. That's really working great for me. Um, and the other thing is to get, if you're gonna have a two turbo setup, get a really high flowing pump like this, like three gallons per minute, four gallons per minute, something like that. That Spartan pump would have done fine if I only had one turbo, but because I've got two turbos feeding this, the flow is double. So if I've got a half a gallon coming from this one, it's two gallons coming from combined. So I, those are the two things you're gonna have to have to, um, to make a rear mount turbo kit work. But here's the brilliant thing. The guy that built the kit already figured this out, already told me and already supplied everything that you needed in the kit. I just didn't listen. So call me stupid. I'm sure I'm gonna get raped in the comments, whatever. I've got it fixed now. And all of this has been a learning experience. So now the one thing I've gotta do is clean the oil out of the intercooler because it's been spraying oil up there. I've gotta clean the oil out of the intercooler once I clean the oil out of the intercooler, I've got to finish the tune because right now it's got like a three quarters of the way finished tune. It runs eight PSI right now and I've still got solid air to fuel ratios, but I want to run 10 PSI and I want to get the timing finished and I want to get the speed density tune finished and all that stuff because right now the check engine light's on because the tune's not finished. So um, after that, then I'm going to rebuild the torque tube. Because what I decided was it was kind of silly for me to tear the whole thing apart with it having a bad alternator and with it having this oiling problem in the turbos. So I decided to fix the oiling problem, to change the alternator, and then I'm going to start ripping the torque tube apart. So that'll be coming over the next few weeks. I'm not exactly sure when. Um, I'm really happy, so hopefully in the next month maybe I'll be getting a dyno video up. Maybe two months. I don't know. It depends on how life works. Depends on if I have to travel. Depends on all kinds of stuff, but we'll see. But stay tuned. Dino videos will be coming soon because I am anxious to finish this thing. When you, especially now that there's no oiling problem, when you take this puppy down the road with that header wrap on there, my gosh, it is a handful. It spools up. You get a full boost by 3,000 RPM, which is pretty much right after you get off the line. It is a handful going down the road. It is nuts. Um, and I think it's probably only around 550 at the wheels, 500, 550 at the wheels. And it, it's just nuts to drive. I can't wait to see whenever it's finished tuning. Um, it's probably going to be even more nuts than that. So stay tuned.